Welcome to our Osmo Pocket Ultimate Review. In this video, we will cover the following topics. Unboxing, Camera Highlights, The Mimo App, Best Accessories, Test Footage, and Review. Let's get started. Unboxing. The Osmo Pocket comes with the three axis gimbal stabilizer with integrated camera, the cover to protect the camera, two different types of smartphone adapters so that you can connect it to your smartphone, a USB cable for charging, manuals, and other documents. Camera Highlights The Osmo Pocket is a 3-axis stabilized camera. It greatly smooths out or eliminates jerky camera shake that you would normally see in a camera without a gimbal or stabilization. The Osmo Pocket is lightweight and is made to fit in your pocket. It has a 1.08 inch touchscreen that allows you to view what you are shooting and change camera settings. It can record up to 60 frames per second 4K video and up to 120 frames per second slow motion in 1080p. It can capture 12 megapixel still photos. The lens aperture is f2.0. It has an internal rechargeable battery. It records to a micro SD card. MIMO app. The camera can be attached to a smartphone using a free app called MIMO. This turns your phone into an Osmo Pocket controller and viewfinder. I really like using my phone with the Osmo Pocket, although it is not necessary. You can use the Osmo Pocket on its own. The first mode in the app is called Story. You pick different templates. They include things like a color grade and transitions. The next mode is Pano. Here you can shoot 3x3 or 180 degree photos. This is where the Osmo Pocket shoots multiple still images that are stitched together to make one very wide panoramic shot that a single picture could not capture. Here is a single shot. Here is a 180 degree panoramic. Here is a single shot. Here's a 3x3 three three panoramic shot. The next mode is Photo. This is where you take still images. You have manual controls for ISO and shutter. I recommend shooting the lowest ISO possible, determined by your lighting conditions. You can absolutely use high ISO speeds, but it will introduce some noise in the image, just like any other camera. You adjust ISO and shutter to get proper exposure. Proper exposure happens when the EV meter reads 0, 0.0, the middle of the scale. Anything right of the middle has overexposed areas. Anything left of the middle on the meter has underexposed areas. Lowering your ISO can help fix overexposed images. Increasing the shutter speed also helps with overexposed images. Increasing your ISO helps with underexposed images. Lowering your shutter speed also helps with underexposed images to reach proper exposure. You can also switch to auto mode where the camera adjusts for exposure on its own. If you click down here, you get pro or basic photo settings, like shooting JPEG images or JPEG and RAW images at the same time. Raw DNG images give you extra data to adjust pictures later in a program like Photoshop, which is quite useful. You can fix things like white balance and exposure. JPEG files have a look baked into the image that can't be modified as much after they've been shot, but they do take up less space on your SD card. You can choose the aspect ratio you want to shoot, 16 by 9, 4, 3, or 3, 2. You can adjust white balance to achieve proper color. You can turn on a grid to help you frame your shots. On the thirds, for example. 
The rule of thirds is the process of dividing an image into nine equal parts with two equally spaced horizontal and two vertical lines. Important compositional elements should be placed along these lines or their intersections. It has a timer, The next mode is video. You can pan and tilt the camera with this joystick. You can adjust the gimbal mode here. Fast follow is for following objects that are moving fast. Slow follow is for following slower moving objects. You can also choose follow, Tilt Locked, or FPV Mode. In FPV Mode, when you tilt the handle of the pocket sideways, the camera will follow. In FPV Mode, the three axes are not locked. In other modes, the horizon always stays flat. Tilt Locked keeps your current up-down position regardless of your handle movements. In Tilt Locked Mode, only the pan axis moves. Follow mode is the most frequently used mode that supports stabilization in three directions. The gimbal moves consistently with the handle to ensure stable and smooth footage. Here you can decide the resolution you want to shoot in, 1080 or 4K. You can also choose your frame rate, 24, 25, 30, 48, 50, or 60. And you have a fine or super fine quality setting. Superfine only works in some frame rates or resolutions. The difference between fine and superfine is very marginal in my opinion. Then we have video settings. MOV or MP4. Usually Mac people choose MOV and PC people choose MP4. You can adjust white balance as well. There are presets like sunny or cloudy for example. Even a custom setting for dialing in a more specific color temperature. A proper white balance makes the color in your shot look natural. Whites look white. Color setting. You can pick either normal or cine-like. Cine-like is flatter, and you can add LUTs to it when color correcting later. Here's a LUT that I added called That Airy Look, which I like a lot. I'll leave links to some free LUTs in the description below this video. Video shot in normal mode has more contrast and color baked into the image. I use this option when I don't want to do a lot of color correcting later. Volume amplification mode is a way of controlling audio input levels. Noise reduction is for the audio on the Osmo Pocket. It helps reduce or eliminate wind noise, for example. Overexposed. You see a zebra pattern on parts of the image that are overexposed. Adjust your ISO or shutter speed until the overexposed areas go away. A histogram is another tool for exposing. It shows you the dark, mid, and bright information in your image. If the histogram leans too far to the left, your image is underexposed. If it leans too far to the right, it is overexposed or clipped. The histogram can be moved around the screen. Focus mode. You can pick AFC or AFS. AFC is autofocus continuous. And when you're in that mode, the pocket keeps looking for a focus until it finds something it is happy with. AFS is autofocus single. You tap on the target on the screen and Osmo finds its focus. To lock focus, just hold your finger on the screen until you see the lock icon. To track an object, just draw a box around it and the camera will follow it. This play button allows you to view the clips and photos that you shot. The next mode is slow motion. It does crop the image, but allows you to shoot in 120 frames per second in 1080p.
click here and you can also format the SD card and check your firmware version. The next mode is time lapse. Here you pick your interval, then your duration. You also have a path option, which allows you to program a camera move into your time lapse video, which looks great. Best accessories. One, SanDisk Extreme Plus flash memory card. The camera does not come with a memory card. You can use a micro SD card up to 256 gigabytes. I chose the 64 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Plus card. It's a good value and can handle high frame rates like shooting 4K at 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second in 1080p. Two, ND filter sets. I got two packs. A six pack that has ND4, 8, 16 and ND polarizers 4, 8 and 16. And another four pack with ND32, ND64, and two polarizers, ND32 and ND64. ND filters, or neutral density filters, are like sunglasses for your camera. They help you achieve proper exposure on a bright day. They also help you to get a lower shutter speed when shooting in bright conditions. Without ND filters, you have to use high shutter speeds to get a properly exposed image. High shutter speeds have less motion blur and cause your video to be less natural looking. With ND filters, you are able to achieve slower shutter speeds that give your video a natural motion blur on moving objects. Usually the shutter speed you want to achieve is twice the speed of the frame rate that you are shooting. So if you're shooting 60 frames per second, you want a shutter speed of 120. The filter set also comes with circular polarizing filters. You turn the filter to darken skies or eliminate glare on shiny surfaces, like glass. The filters are all magnetic and easily connect to your pocket camera without the need of screwing anything in place. 3. Osmo Pocket Phone Holder as I mentioned earlier, I really like using my Osmo Pocket with my phone attached. Unfortunately, the only thing connecting the phone to the camera is this small adapter. For a more sturdy connection that makes the pocket camera and your phone feel like one solid piece of gear, I recommend this Osmo Pocket phone holder. It also has a threaded hole for use with a tripod, or a cold shoe mount for adding other accessories. 4. Portable Storage Carrying Bag I'm a big fan of cases or bags to properly store my gear. This case was inexpensive, but it's constructed well, and it can hold a lot of stuff in a compact space. 5. USB Cable Extension Cord This cable allows you to connect your Osmo Pocket to your phone with a cable. I like to use this when shooting time-lapse. I set up the shot with my phone connected so I can make sure my settings are good. Then I disconnect the cable so I can play with my phone while the camera records time-lapse video. Anyone that shoots time-lapse knows that a lot of waiting is involved. 6. Power Bank Portable Battery Recharger The Osmo Pocket has an internal rechargeable battery that cannot be changed. In other words, once you drain the battery, you have to stop and recharge it. Recharging time is around 2 hours. Shooting time is also around 2 hours depending on use. One easy solution to keep the internal battery charged is a USB portable power bank. With this bank, I've been able to shoot all day without any problems. 7. Gorillapod The tripod seems kind of silly when you think of using a gimbal camera that you typically associate with movement. That being said, a Gorillapod is great for shooting time lapse. The Gorillapod can be used anywhere with its sturdy octopus-like legs, and that's why I love it. 8. DJI Wireless Module The wireless module provides a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection between the Osmo Pocket and your smartphone for seamless remote control and transmission. It's a way to remotely control your camera with your phone without it being plugged directly into the camera with an adapter or using a cable. This can be quite handy and it works great. 
9. DJI Controller Wheel The controller wheel is equipped with a dial for precise pan and tilt control. It's a pressure sensitive wheel so you can get smooth, slow or fast pans or tilts depending on how fast you move your finger on the wheel. 10. DJI Accessory Mount The accessory mount provides compatibility with a wide range of sports camera accessories. It basically gives the Osmo a GoPro connection, so you can use a mount like this one by Sandmark. I'll leave links to the accessories I mentioned in the description below this video if you want to check them out. I also included a microphone for getting better sound and a battery charging case made by DJI which people love. Test footage. Here's the test footage I shot with the Osmo Pocket on day one. I shot it in 4K at 60 frames per second. I was really happy with the results. Review The Osmo Pocket produces quality 4K video, and as you can see, it makes handheld moves buttery smooth. I highly recommend it. The only negative I saw was low battery life without the ability to change batteries. I solved this issue with a power bank. I also don't love the small adapter that connects the Osmo Pocket to your phone. To improve the sturdiness of this connection, I recommend buying the Osmo Pocket phone holder. Overall, the Osmo Pocket is very impressive and a lot of fun to use. It makes your footage look very cinematic. It also takes great photos. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe.